Because, yeah, we've been under, under some psychical attack. Of course, you know, we should have expected it and perhaps we should have prepared ourselves better for it. But whenever you do proclaim the truth, spiritually speaking, you get enemies, you know, to that truth. So the enemies know what I'm talking about and they know what they've been doing. And we recognize the spiritual and psychical war fear that we're under. And we're going to step up our defense and counter attack spiritually, you know, in this psychical war. Remember, it's a spiritual war, and the spirit is connected with the soul and the psyche and so forth and so on. But anyway, as we touch on these very important issues, the next issue I want to talk about is um, the etymology. What is the etymology of pimp? Pimpin. What is pimpin? Many of the young people, especially so-called black males in this uh, Babylon society, PTSD, post-traumatic, slave, disordered society, have absolutely no idea of what this seemingly pop terminology actually means. Pimp. The pimpin. Pimpin big time. You know, I really wonder if they did, would they still take so much false pride and pretense in pimping, pimping, so forth and so on. Well, that remains to be seen and heard, but if you are willing, we will now examine and investigate the etymology of the word pimp first, and then turn to slavery to find the true origins of pimping. And if you want to know about pimping big time slavery what happened to the lost sheep of the Beit Israel to the black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean that was and still remains pimping big time so previously many of you may be familiar with the fact that we explored the true meaning or etymology of nice of nice and we just put a clip up there and we will hope to upload a little bit more on that but get the full teaching it should be out and on cd audio cd in 2010 so that one is going to drop in 2010 on nice the etymology of nice and it's also going to touch on spells spells are done through words and your ignorance of the true meaning of words or the etymology of words and your connotative use of these words all contribute to that spellbound condition all that tr contributes to what we know spiritually as babylon so in the profession and the confession of the true witness of the king of kings and christ we know that babylon runs and functions on witchcraft and one of the key ingredients of witchcraft is spells and spells are spun and woven the whole Penting and, and hexing of it is done through words. You understand? And that connects to your mind and that connects to your psyche and your thoughts and your feeling and your emotions and so forth and so on. That's why a lot of y'all are very emotional when the truth is proclaimed. And, and you've never heard this before. You're never, and it seems as though, you know, we're being arrogant or we're being a little like we know it all. So, no, we're sharing with you the truth. And you should be honest enough to recognize that the half of the story hasn't been told until now. So, as we already said previously, we had explored the true meaning or the etymology of nice. The full teaching is coming out in 2010. So, go to our website the audio, the lectures, look for it, the downloads, so forth and so on. Now, interestingly, the word nice and the word pimp have more in common than one would at first think on the surface, superficially. Nice is thought to me pleasing and acceptable, but really, now we know, it means foolish. It means wanton and ignorant. Make a little note under that word of wonton because we got some links and connection with wonton. And you can put down as a note those of the Decamas Amorit that do take notes in their debtors and their notebooks for these studies. Put a, a, a note next to wonton, wonton under the meaning of nice. And make a link with His Imperial Majesty when he said that 
as Lich Teferi, as the son of man, he did not grow up with undue softness. Undue softness. Next to wanton, put undue softness. Undue softness. So we're going to we're gonna make a real good connection with that word. And since we're at it, put next to that effeminate. Put next to that effeminate. So wanton, she have a link to undue softness. She have a link to effeminate. And if some of y'all want to go ahead, then do your Bible concordance word study. And you'll find the biblical references and... Maybe you can put this together nice and pimp and then check it out. So, nice, which is thought to mean pleasant or pleasing, acceptable, really means foolish, wanton, and ignorant. Now, in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, in the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, we're told and we're cautioned by the black Christ, the true Christ, Getachius Christos, against the use of the Hebrew raka as well as against the use of fool and foolish using fool and foolish you understand how we use how we use and how we utilize these words right now we have also learned and we're going to share with you how spells have been cast against the lost sheep of the Beit israel by the frequent usage or abusage and repetition of words, phrases, that the hearer, when the hearer think they understand it, but really they don't. Such is the case with the word nice. So this is why we must teach the new and the next generation of black males, redeemed black males and females, the, the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Don't be nice and stop being nice. Don't be nice, stop being nice. Teach your children. Teach your children. Teach it to your children. Share this with others who are willing to learn. Don't be nice and stop being nice. But first, of course, you would have to teach them about the etymology of nice and give them a few objective lessons so that they will get the meaning for themselves and understand the consequences of ignorance, witchcraft, and spell casting so that they can come out of Babylon. Now, I suspect that if black folks, especially black males, black males, that sounds strange, doesn't it? Black males. But I suspect that if y'all weren't so nice, they would also not be or become pimps. They won't become pimps. See, the two actually go hand in hand. Not on the surface. You understand? You won't see it on the surface. You won't see it just by the appearance of it. You understand? Ignorantly. You could only claim and think that there is some pride in being a pimp and pimping if you are, in fact, really a nice guy or a nice girl. Nice gal. In fact, most pimps are very nice guys, and their pros or their hoes, prostitutes, pros are very nice gals, to be willing to be what they have become, and then to even take some pretentious pride in it. Yet, they are all victims. They are all victims of their own ignorance, and this devilish society that keeps them in a spell bound sort of delusion as to what is really going on. Most of these nice folks, the pimps and the pros, are actively and aggressively living in the very image of the beast. They even go through such lengths to look like or as simulate the life or lifestyle of their former slave masters and mistresses as though they are, quote, getting even with the devil who broke and raped them to begin with. One must remember this. If you get even with the devil or a devil, guess what? You've become a devil also. Black males were raped, beat, murdered, and made into male bitches or biatches of white supremacy and they in turn have done the same to their own black females now here's the worst part some of them have done this even knowingly 
Now, let's look at this uh, vicious cycle. 